So now y'all come into my kitchen. This is cooking today. Hi, welcome to Cooking Today, glad you're here. It's hot outside, isn't it? Oh my goodness, summer is probably not my favorite. I really love fall because I like to be cool. That says all of the other middle-aged women in the world. <laughs> we like to be cool, don't we? Well, this is one of the cool recipes that come out of my kitchen when it's really hot and I don't want to do a ton of long cooking with heavy food and I want something that's just kind of light and tastes really good and takes advantage of a lot of the good fresh produce that we can get right now. Like the tomatoes are really good and the cucumbers are always really good. We're so fortunate with that, but just some good fresh bites. We are making a panzanella. Panzanella is actually an Italian, Italian word for basically a bread salad, which if you have not had it before, it is delicious. Rather than, rather than having greens and dressing and tomatoes and cucumbers and all the good things like that, and then having really, really super crunchy, crunchy croutons on the top. A panzanella is a bread salad, which means that the bread is actually toasted. We're gonna make it ourselves. We're gonna saute it around. It's crispy on the outside and a little good and chewy on the inside. And then it's actually tossed in the dressing. So it's kind of a wet bread salad, but we've used day old ciabatta and we're gonna toast it ourselves. So it's got some girth and it can kind of hold the moisture. Um, you know, kind of hold up to the moisture, I guess I should say. And so it's really good. Now this panzanella salad is not something that you can make in advance. You're gonna definitely want to toss it together. Well, I guess that's not necessarily true. You could do the elements, like you could get some things ready. Prep a little here, prep a little there. But you're not gonna wanna toss it and then wait to serve it. You're gonna wanna toss it and serve it right away because that's the best part of the bread is when it hits that dressing and then you can serve it right away. So let me tell you all the good things that are going in our panzanella. We have a mix of the little yellow cherry tomatoes and some like red, just some regular red ones. This is what I had available at my grocery. If you can get beautiful like heirloom tomatoes or um, some little romas, but you know the ones that have like multiple colors. Sometimes they've got some pretty striations in them or they're orange and yellow and some kind of green and red mix. Those are beautiful in the salad. So if you can get your hands on some of those, you need about two to three cups of tomatoes, cubed, halved, quartered, whatever works best. We want everything to kind of be bite size, nothing too big. You wanna be able to kind of get a little bit of everything on your fork. So I have about two, two to three cups, probably closer to three cups of a mix of grape tomatoes. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get a clove of garlic and grate it in with our tomatoes. And what we're doing to these tomatoes is we're seasoning them. We're marinating them in some really good flavor. Ooh, that's a big one. I'll do that one. I love garlic, it does not scare me. I love the bites so much. So I'm doing a big one here. But we're gonna put some flavor on these tomatoes and then we're gonna marinate them and let them kind of camp out a little bit and get some good flavor on them. And then when we toss them in with our chicken and our yummy dressing, it's gonna be really, really good. You wanna kind of season as you go. We've talked about that many times. Okay, a lot of times I chop or I mince, but today we're actually gonna grate this into our tomatoes. And I'm just gonna go right over it with my little microplane zester here. We have these at Unimaze. I absolutely couldn't live without them. They are perfect for grating this garlic. We do a little parm, we zest our lemon, which we're gonna do that here shortly in a minute anyway. It is the best. As a matter of fact, I believe the person who created this or owns the company is from Arkansas. How about that? We love an Arkansas brand, don't we? Okay. So. I, I boasted about how great this was because it was so big, but y'all, it's too big. <laughs> we don't want to, we don't want to sleep alone, right? Because we've had too much garlic on our tomatoes. So I'm going to do just a little of that. So use a normal size garlic clove. Then 
what we're going to do is a pinch of salt. My fingers are wet, so generally I would pinch that, but I'm not going to right now. We're going to do a little bit of pepper on these. Okay. And then I'm just going to swirl some oil. I don't really measure. I think our recipe says a couple of tablespoons, but you don't have to get super hung up on that. We just want there to be some flavor in our tomatoes, okay? Oh, my word. It just smells so good. Olive oil. Mm, 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 mm. Now, to our tomatoes, we are going to add some cucumbers. Very, very fresh, really delicious. What I have here is an English cucumber, and it is the kind that comes one long cucumber individually wrapped. I know you've seen them at the grocery and you might have wondered why are those special compared to the little garden cucumbers that we're used to. When we come back, I'm gonna tell you why and then we're gonna slice those up and we're gonna marinate them in here with our tomatoes and then we're gonna keep on rolling. Wait till you see what we do with our chicken skin. It's delicious. This is cooking today. Welcome back to Cooking Today. We're making panzanella today, which is a bread salad that we're tossing in a delicious vinaigrette. We have marinated tomatoes and garlic and olive oil and salt in one bowl. We're about to add our cucumbers. We have pulled some rotisserie chicken, which makes this so easy. We've reserved the skin because we're gonna crisp it. And then we have ciabatta bread that we're just gonna toast. It's so easy, it's light, it's fresh, it's pretty. So what we have is we have our tomatoes marinating. And what is so special about these English cucumbers is that they have very few seeds, very few seeds. And so unlike a garden cucumber, you know, you cut into a garden cucumber and it is so just wet with seeds on the inside. And actually you can taste the seeds. You know, you've got the actual big pieces that come out of the middle. Well, these garden cucumbers, look, they're very... They're, they're not necessarily seedless, but the seeds are so, so tiny that you can just slice them and eat them just like this. You don't have to, a lot of times with a garden cucumber, you kind of have to seed them or take a spoon and kind of scrape out all the stuff that's in the middle because it's just too wet and it's too much and nobody wants that. And so these are the way to go. As a matter of fact, I rarely even use a regular garden cucumber anymore. Sorry to the garden cucumbers. So I'm just taking these, slicing them really, really thinly, and we're going to throw them in there with our marinating tomatoes in garlic and olive oil. We're going to hit it again with a little salt and pepper at the end. This is one of those recipes where you may want to salt and pepper it a little bit more at the end. So you just want to taste as you go. I actually really like it with a little bit less salt and pepper on it because I love just the taste. I knew that was gonna race away from me. Did you see me catch it? I intervened. Um, I, I actually like to just taste the fresh of the vegetables with just a little bit of salt and pepper. But when I've served this to my family, they all go for the salt and pepper shakers and they load it up. Mmm, mmm. So fresh and delicious, y'all. Okay, I just threw my slices into my big bowl with my tomatoes. My garlic, my salt and pepper, mm. so fresh. Isn't that good and easy? Okay, we're just gonna let those hang out. Okay, now we have rotisserie chicken. That is so easy. Don't you love when anything says we use rotisserie chicken because that just means that there's a step or two that's been taken out. So what we did is I got a traditional one, but you could use lemon pepper, whatever it is that they have, and I pulled the white meat off. So basically all of the chicken breasts and all the pieces around the side and some of it up underneath. And I reserved the skin. So here's the, here's the meat. I pulled this meat last night and it's refrigerated it and it's kind of gelled to itself. You know how it does that? But it's better to pull those chickens, those rotisserie chickens. Your life will be a whole lot easier if you pull it when they're warm. The meat comes off a lot better and the skin comes off a lot better. So see all this good white meat that I pulled off? We snacked on the dark meat, but we pulled the white meat. And then I have this giant glob of the chicken skin because there's so much flavor in there, isn't it? So what we want to do first with our chicken skin 
is chop it. And instead of using bacon, which can you even believe those words just came out of my mouth? <laughs> instead of using bacon, we're going to crisp the chicken skin. That is not my idea. I actually saw that on, uh, I think it was a New York Times food, I don't know, website or something like that about how to use the chicken skin. And so I don't own that idea, but I thought it was an awful good one. So we have our chicken skin there, and it has all that good flavor. That's the thing that's been seasoned and tastes so good. And I have a cast iron skillet over medium heat, and I'm going to swirl it real quick, a little bit of oil. And then we're going to crisp the chicken skin, and it's going to get yummy, and it's going to be a little bit crispy and a little bit darker, but have that tiny bit of chew, tons and tons of flavor. And we're also going to cook with our chicken skin some capers, which are tiny little briny, kind of taste like olives. Little capers, they come in a little guy like this. Only a couple of tablespoons of those. Okay, so I'm waiting for this to get hot so we can saute our chicken skin. And I just chopped it. Mmm, stuff's so good, isn't it? Then what I've got is the white meat. And we don't want to, I don't like this shredded up, which generally I shred chicken on this show because I like how tender it gets. But I just want to do it in some little bites. Just like I said, forkfuls of chicken. So I don't know what those are, half inch. Do y'all ever really care what it says like that when it says half inch? I've always wondered if y'all care about the details or if y'all just know. We're just going to say half inch. But you know me, I like to say, eyeball it. You know what a bite looks like. Okay, I'm gonna keep cutting this chicken into little bites. I'm gonna saute my chicken skin till it gets crisp. We're gonna throw in some capers in there, a couple tablespoons. And then when we come back, we are gonna get going on the bread. It's the best part of this whole salad, of course. Can't wait for you to see it. When we come back, this is cooking today. Welcome back to cooking today. We're making panzanella. It is a bread salad. Oh my goodness. And what we've done is we have pulled the chicken off of a rotisserie chicken and saved the skin. And I have it crisping in a cast iron skillet. And y'all, it almost becomes like bacon. Isn't that delicious? So much flavor. It would be just a waste to throw that out when you can crisp that up, right? So I'm sauteing this down just a littlest. Whew, smells good. And then I'm gonna remove this to a paper towel lined tray and let this sit for just a second. I've taken the white meat and cut it up into little bites. And then I am going to scoop this and put the, this is the big bowl. This is our serving bowl that we're gonna ultimately put everything in. In my smaller bowl, I have my tomatoes and my cucumbers marinating and getting yummy, and some olive oil and garlic and salt and pepper, super simple stuff that y'all have in your houses probably. Um, and then I am going to make our dressing, and then we're about to do our bread. It's just all really, really good. So I'm gonna take, let's see. I have this paper towel lined tray over here, and what the paper towel does is it sucks away all this little extra grease and moisture and helps these stay crispy rather than getting soft from moisture remaining on them. That's why we always do bacon on a paper towel lined tray or these little skins or anything else that we're trying to get crispy. The paper towel does the trick. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We've got as much of it out as I can get. Okay, we're gonna let that sit. Mm, capers, so good. Okay, so we have our chicken that we've pulled. It's right here in our big bowl. Set that right there. And now we wanna make our dressing. There is an actual dressing, not just olive oil and um, you know, salt and pepper. So what I have is the juice of one lemon. You can usually get a couple tablespoons out of a lemon. You need a couple tablespoons. That one has 8,000 seeds. Can you see that? 8,000 seeds in that one. Holy moly. Okay. 
That was only one side. That was not even the whole lemon. Let's see how many more in this side. One, two, three, four, five. Five more. Good Lord. So you want a couple of tablespoons of, all, of um, lemon out of your, um, or lemon juice out of your lemon. If you need to do two lemons to get that, then that's fine. And you know to roll it on the counter so that like this with all your might, and it helps you, it makes breaks the, all those little pocket, pockets inside. And then it helps you release your juice a little bit more. Then I'm doing a little bit of stone ground mustard. If you have Dijon, that's fine too. Then we're gonna do some honey. Have you noticed that a little honey and a little mustard go in almost all good dressings? I'm a little low. We're gonna have to squeeze all, all of our might. Here we go. So there's about a tablespoon. We're gonna do a couple tablespoons. I'm gonna get it all out of there. Okay? Sorry about that. Then I'm just gonna take my little whisk and we're gonna whisk that together because that kind of serves as our base, our flavor base. We're gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper. So all we have, lemon juice, a little bit of mustard, a little bit of honey, and it's just the little tiniest bit, y'all, just look, hardly any at all down inside my bowl, okay? Because this is not a soaking wet salad. And then we're gonna start drizzling and drizzle and whisk, drizzle and whisk. We're gonna drizzle in about, I don't know, a couple tablespoons, quarter, quarter of a cup or so of olive oil. And I like a fruity olive oil. I like one that really has some flavor, that tastes real fruity. That's one of my favorites. Um, because I want it to have some, you know, I want it to have flavor. So here's our little dressing. Mmm, 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 that's so good. You could put that on anything, y'all. And then I've got my chicken. So we're just gonna go ahead and pour that right on top of our chicken and let that be flavoring our chicken. So see what we're doing? We're kind of flavoring all of our steps. We have our tomatoes. We have our cucumbers. They're sitting in some flavor. We have our chicken. It is sitting in some flavor. We've sauteed down our chicken skin and our capers. Set that aside. And they have great flavor. So I'm going to get those Oh, we've already got those. We've already got those out. So, in the same skillet, you don't even have to wipe it out. But I'm going to go ahead and get my heat turned back up a little bit. Swirl me one more time with some olive oil on this one. Olive oil is key. We're making an Italian salad, so you're going to always have olive oil. All I'm going to do, this is so easy, y'all. You're going to love these. I'm cutting this Dale ciabatta loaf into quarter in, or into half. I can't do it, into one inch cubes, is that okay? It's good for it to be day old. So we're cutting them into pieces like this. I'm throwing them in that skillet. We're gonna saute those around with a clove of garlic just thrown down in the side. Maybe a couple sprigs of oregano, just to add some flavor in this step. We're gonna crisp those up until they look like really good yummy croutons. You're gonna see what they look like when we come back. And that's it. We're going to throw it all together and eat it. It's a pretty panzanella salad. This is cooking today. Hi, welcome back. We're just wrapping up panzanella, which is a really good dressing, chicken, uh, fresh vegetables, so good. It's a bread salad. It is a delicious bread salad. And this is what we're going to do with it. We have chicken that we pulled off of our rotisserie chicken, the good meat. We cubed it. We tossed it in a little dressing that we made that had lemon and mustard and all kinds of good stuff in it. Then we have been marinating tomatoes and cucumbers in just good flavored olive oil with some garlic and salt and pepper. We're going to put this all in one big bowl. It's key that you start, have your big bowl ready because we're putting it all in one place. Then... We sauteed down and crisped the skin off the rotisserie chicken. And listen, do you hear that crunch? It is so good. It's almost like the flavor of bacon and pork rinds and the crispiest bite ever on the outside of a good piece of meat with a sear. We sauteed that with some capers for a salty, vinegary, briny bite. 
Mm. Then I just quartered a purple onion and then cut it into thin slices. Just right there. And then last but not least, y'all, we sauteed our, our bread in swirls of olive oil, fresh oregano thrown in there, and then crisped it up and it's going right in. Toss it all together, serve it with a little feta and then some fresh basil or whatever else you think is pretty on the top. I'm going to do fresh oregano leaves and then pour it on a platter and serve it right up. It is the prettiest, freshest salad for your summer. I hope you'll try it at home and love every bite. This is cooking today.